Hi friends, it's Monica and today I'm going to be sharing my top 5 books from 2021. First off, Happy New Year and I just wanted to say despite current world events, I hope you all had a good one. My 2021 reading year wasn't really the best but I did manage to read 25 books despite multiple reading slumps last year and let's just get right into it. At number 5, I chose Luck of the Titanic by Stacey Lee. So this one is a YA historical fiction novel. It's set back in 1912, around the time when the Titanic first set sail. I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. Luck of the Titanic is loosely based around the true stories of six survivors from the Titanic who are of Chinese descent. And in this book, we are following British Chinese twins, Valora and Jamie Luck who happen to be aboard on the Titanic. And Jamie and Valora have been separated for two years after their parents' death, and Valora has managed to talk her way onto the ship in order to be reunited with her twin brother. She does need to keep her head down as she navigates the first-class cabins. She does try to convince a circus owner to hire them as acrobats. And all of this comes to a breaking point when the Titanic hits the iceberg, and then the story becomes of one of survival. So what I did love about this book was the atmosphere of the 1912 world um, based on the Titanic, including the Edwardian fashion styles and the distinctions between the classes so that we followed Valor with her first class accommodations and with Jamie in his third class laborer. But the strong bond between the siblings, Jamie and Valora, was really the focal point and the star of the book in my opinion because it really just showed their sibling love even though they have been separated for a few years and you really do see their bond really shine throughout emotional scenes especially when it comes to the climax of the book what i personally struggle with historical fiction books is that sometimes it's a little bit slower paced and uh, this book was a little bit slower paced at the beginning but it does pick up but overall um luck of the titanic is a gem in the historical fiction genre and i do think the really deep research and depth that this book goes into really shows the skill and style of stacy lee and how it makes for a really entertaining read at number four i do have a uh, Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare and this is the second book in the Last Hours trilogy. I think this is like the fourth main series in the Shadowhunters world. There's just like, dozens of books but I do have to say with each book that I read from Cassandra Clare you could tell her writing improves compared to City of Bones of the first book in the Shadowhunters world but you do become really attached to the characters and in this series, the Last Hours trilogy, it's set in Regency London around late 1800s and early 1900s and we're following uh, Cordelia and other supporting characters and I really did love this Regency London backdrop because you're, you're watching your characters fight against demons and monsters and trying to navigate proper society and all the mischief and fun all the characters manage to get themselves into. So in this series, we do have multiple point of views, which I think is quite typical from Cassandra Clare in her Shadowhunters books because there are quite a large cast of characters, but I did love them all and um, we do f continue progression on following the Mary Thieves, which is a group of four boys that includes James Herondale and his friends and all their dynamics and what they get up to is really interesting to read about. And in this book, we do see Cordelia finding her way to be more of a badass warrior and trying to find her place in this London society. And there's also something I refer to as ghost mayhem in this book because there are a lot of interactions with ghosts and I really like that storyline. And of course we do have a lot of secrets and tiptoeing around in the Shadowhunters books because we're trying to uncover mysteries and try to solve the huge arcing problem throughout the trilogy and that's really entertaining. Chain of Iron is an intense journey filled with demon slaying, emotional dramatics, and you do get some elements of Jack the Ripper. Overall, it's just a really nice, fun installment and I always love seeing these beautiful covers and I can't wait for the third and last book in this trilogy. Let me just say this, it can be really intimidating to start the Shadowhunter books, but I just want to say it, it is quite worthwhile for 
uh, you to like see all the progression of all the characters and how all the series interconnect with each other. My next book at number three is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. So I did read a bunch of adult books last year but um, this is one of the few that I've read and I loved. So I did rate this one a five out of five stars. I'm sure a lot of you already know about the series, the Akatar series, um, and it's quite beloved or hated upon <laughs> on the internet. In this book, we are following Fair's older sister, Nesta, and we're seeing the after effects of a giant war that happened in previous books so i'm not going to say much about that if you haven't read it and with nesta she's quite a strong and stoic character most people would call her cold that kind of does show through her actions towards her sisters and especially towards Feyre but throughout this book she experiences quite a lot so she goes through her own emotional journey and how the war affected her really personally and pretty much I would say she goes through and tries to recover from PTSD and during this journey um, she, it's not easy for her she takes a lot of back steps but she does make progress towards her healing and she learns how to fight for herself so going into this book um, with Nesta and Cassian, I'm quite biased with them because ever since um, I saw them interact with each other, I was just like, okay, I there's just something with them. Sorry about the lighting, sun's coming out. So with um, Nesta and Cassian, they do progress in the romantic relationship and there are quite a lot of steamy scenes. So that was really fun to read. <laughs> and uh, I think this book is a little bit more slower than the other Akatar books because it is mostly character driven and dealing with the after effects of the big war. And it does establish more storylines for future books as well. Another aspect of this book that I really, really enjoyed was learning more about the dynamics of Azriel and Cassian, so their bromance as I call it. And especially with Azriel, in previous books, he wasn't really a standout character to me, but with this one, with A Court of Silver Flames, he was really funny and I really liked his antics and kind of getting to know him more as a character. And this book is massive. It's around 750 pages and I did think it did drag at some points. Going forward, I do want to see Sarah J Maas elevate her writing in terms of her adult books since she seems to be focusing more on her adult writing. So I really did love seeing Nessa's journey and I cannot wait for Azriel's book. So the next book at number two, I have here Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. When I first read the synopsis of Grown, I knew I had to pick this one up. It is a contemporary, YA contemporary with elements of mystery and really hard-hitting topics. So Grown is a whirlwind of a book and we're following a young black teenager called Enchanted and she's trying to pursue her dreams to become a singer. So one morning she wakes up in a, f in a pool of beet juice, which is blood, and she sees the body of Corey Fields who is a top and charting R&B artist and he's obviously dead but she has no previous memory of the last nights and last moments of what could have happened with Corey and why he's now dead and she's there. <laughs> so from that point on, after that chapter, we do follow the past events leading up to the murder scene and we do follow how Enchanted is offered a golden opportunity that seems too good to be true. But Enchanted herself is a very enchanting character. There are metaphors relating to the Little Mermaid and the ocean and those particular messages added to the story kind of reiterate the fact that that young women are ultimately the ones to save themselves along with help with their loved ones. And Enchanted does have rose-colored glasses on on what she thinks but what becoming a singer is all about. But of course, she did not want to get roped into anything more other than trying to pursue her dreams. And it is absolutely not her fault for that. This is not an easy book to read. So this book is not really about the relationship. It's more about how the victim's story is 
not really taken as seriously in the media versus the celebrity story and especially on social media we see nowadays a lot of cancel culture and how really toxic that can become so grown does really highlight this aspect of the media not listening to women especially young black women and how their stories of and their voices are not actually heard in the media and that was one of the aspects of this book that i really appreciated so grown is an intense and unputdownable book that covers this important topic that is going through the music industry and hollywood as a whole it does need to be talked about no matter how hard or ugly it is and it happens and should not be buried and i think tiffany d jackson did a wonderful job at portraying this in this book and i really do recommend grown i did tear up in some moments with enchanted and her family and how things aren't always what it seems at the surface level so if you do want a hard-hitting book and quite an impactful one as well i recommend you to pick up grown so for my favorite book of the year of 2021 i did cheat a little bit on this one but it's the whole it's this whole trilogy with a good girl's guide to murder trilogy by holly jackson I didn't read the first book last year, but I'm just including it in this video because it's just the first book. And I did read the second and third book of this past year. So the second book is called Good Girl, Bad Blood. And then the last book is As Good As Dead. And I rated all of the books five out of five stars. Just to let you know a little bit more about this series, I'm going to describe A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. So we are starting off in a fictional town called Little Kilton, set in England, and we are following Pippa, who is doing her final year project. Pip decides to focus on a local clothes murder case that happened five years ago in her small town, and this is about the murder of Andy Bell by Sal Singh. So this case is really close to home for Pip, and the entire small town believes that uh, Sal did commit the murder. However, with some evidence and some digging around, it was confirmed through a text message that Sal committed suicide and Andy's body was actually never found, so Pip decides to do her own investigation. So throughout the investigation, she does find out that her little town has a lot more secrets than she first thought it did. And as she's trying to uncover the truth, there is someone in town that does not want her to find out the truth. So the results of book one and of Andy's investigation, she's quite smart and she's like a real detective even though she's still, I think, at the end of her high school years. So that revelation continues to be carried on throughout books two and three. I forgot to mention uh, one more aspect of this book is the podcast that Pip creates alongside her investigation. She attracts a lot of attention on the internet and in her small town and that puts more of a target on her back and there are really fun um, small case file notes throughout the book um, that we see like text messages documents and such and um, of Pip's own notes that she makes on the case and the writing style is really quite easy to follow in book one we do see a lot of small details that are carried out throughout book two and three and how large of an impact that these small insignificant things turn out to be case in point all of the books in this trilogy were amazing and i really cannot wait for what holly jackson writes next so if you really want a good ya thriller mystery series i highly recommend this and this was my number one pick of last year so in conclusion that was my small list of top reads of 2021 and i would like to mention i will be uploading weekly either on Thursdays or Fridays. I'll be sharing my upcoming reading goals in a later video this month. And I do hope to hold myself accountable to be more active on YouTube slash booktube and my other social medias. So comment down below what your favorite top 2021 read was. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. See you all soon.